are ready for our first presentation. Ready. Good morning. My name is Mac Baker. I'm Vanessa Montana. My name is Austin Kirchhoff. And over the next 20 minutes or so, our group is going to be presenting on group leadership. I will cover the ethics in group, and I'll also cover leadership and power. Austin is going to present on personality traits, and Vanessa is going to cover the 5M model of leadership effectiveness. Additionally, our leadership team has had a chance to interview leaders of several vertical markets. We're going to share some of the highlights of these interviews and how that aligns to our textbooks. First, I'm going to tell you a little story, though. The first story is about a dad and his son that are making brownie mix. In the brownie mix, the dad is mixing all the ingredients, and the son is watching the father putting in all of the different eggs and all the brownie mix and all that. The dad picks up a little piece of poo and puts it in the brownie mix. And the son looks at his dad and, Dad, what are you doing? And the dad looks at his son and says, Don't worry, son, it's just a little bit. So that's the story of integrity. Just that little bit of poo can ruin your integrity. Now, the Center for Business Ethics of uh, Bentley College has the five questions for ethical or unethical leadership behaviors. Number one, is it right? Two, is it fair? Three, who gets hurt? Four, what would you tell your child? If you don't have a child, what would it feel like to have that information posted on Facebook in the height of publicity on the social media? And five, how does it smell? So would it, would it feel wrong to the average person? So Warren Bennis and Joan Goldsmith use a metaphor here. It's a three-legged stool that shows ambition, confidence, and integrity. So integrity, as we look at uh, with this integrity, with a slide, if you are out of whack on any one of these, that stool is going to be out of whack. Integrity is a huge portion of this. When I think of integrity, I think of the, a little bit here of uh, the United States Marine Corps, and I'd like to show you what they feel about the United States with, with integrity. Integrity is uh, doing the right thing when no one's looking, being able to follow through. That sense of doing what's right is something that the Marine Corps instills in you from the very first moment. Recruits look up to drill instructors on a daily basis. We went from house to house. If we're setting the example by having integrity, they're going to follow suit. He's always had high integrity, but I think the Marine Corps, again, was able to build upon that because it is part of the Marine Corps culture. I teach these recruits how to be better sons, better brothers, better uncles, just better people in general. He is a leader in the Marine Corps and he is a leader in our family 24-7 whether he is in uniform or not. He shows integrity every day in um, everything that he does. We're role models. When we do the right thing over there, the civilian populace sees it and they know that we're there to help, not to hurt. It's just going to make them a better Marine, better leader, and just a better overall person. So. We can all pretty much, we should know what the ethics are, and I think we get it. So moving on from the ethics and integrity, we're going to talk a little bit about the personal power. There's two types of personal power. We all had a chance to read our textbooks this week uh, on leadership, and I will cover the two different types of power. First, we have position power that depends on a member's job or status within an organization. Now, there's four categories underneath position power. You have legitimate power, informational power, coercive power, and reward power. So, uh, I, well, you know, you, you should know what these are here after this week's lesson. Now, the, these are the types of position power. Now, next is personal power. Personal power stems from a member's individual character. Now, again, there's four categories here. We've got referent power, expert power, persuasive power, and charismatic power. So I had the opportunity to interview, uh, actually sold a Cadillac Escalade to the Navy commander of the 7th Fleet, Commander Kevin Carlson. Had a chance to interview him with our six questions here that our team had put together. I'll show you those six questions in a few slides here. 
Now, Commander uh, Carlson, I got a chance to know him. I actually delivered the car to his house, met his wife, Amanda, their two children, Jackson and Ryan, but very decorated from the U.S. Navy Academy. As a leader, you know, he has, uh, uh, you know, the several different types of power, of course, position power, but our textbook shows that depending on the situation, we can have different personality as several of those uh, uh, of powers at, at one time. So as uh, Commander Carlson showed, uh, he has over 200,000 flights. Now he's uh, running the air wing here in the Seventh Fleet with the HSM-41 Seahawks. These are all, okay, of, in his uh, line here in the chain of command, that's all of his, uh, the, the airmen that he's in charge of. Now, 200,000 flights without an accident is pretty impressive. So I had a lot to talk about with uh, the commander, had a lot of questions. In addition to our six questions, there was, uh, there was many more. But at the, as I was talking to him, I was reminded, and I saw it in our textbook, that you know, leadership and leaders are not the same thing. Leadership is the ability to make strategic decisions and to communicate effectively. Leader is a title given to a person. So. Moving to the six questions, these were the six questions of our interview. I'll show you uh, several of them that I've highlighted here for the presentation. The first is the question, what is leadership to you? Not what is leadership, but what is leadership to you? The commander replied that leading downwards and upwards by communication and mutual understanding. So that's a top-down or bottom-up type of communication with his team. So he has to ensure that the message as the sender is being received, okay, by the receiver. And if not, if they don't understand it, they have to communicate back up to the top, okay, how, uh, with the greatest of respect in that communication. Next question, how do you model leadership to your team? Commander said that keeping things simple. Complexity is the enemy of execution. Now, I wouldn't have thought that from a Navy commander, keeping things simple. I thought it would be this big, complex operation. But we all know that a confused mind does nothing. The analysis paralysis. So how do you model leadership to your team? One, you have to beware of your ego. It doesn't matter your age, your position. You'll lose credibility in the eyes of your team if you, if you, if you do that. And if you just show that you don't know everything, it'll strengthen your position as a leader. So. What is his favorite way to mentor members? And he used the SEALs lingo, cover and move. So that cover and move is you're always ensuring that, uh, that you're covering for the team that is moving. While I'm up here, for example, my team is covering me and I'm covering them. But I like what he did on, on illustrating this, is that you use before you walk, before you lift the other leg, you're putting the other leg down. So that is perfect teamwork. You're covering, you, that was a, a great illustration that I like that he had. So lastly, I wanted to share with you that what you read, what you hear, and what you see will determine and help you with the integrity and with your leadership, with the ethics. And I also want to ask you here as I finish up here my section, I would like to have you, if you could, just remember that story of the brownie mix and share that with your children too someday. Thank you. I'm going to have uh, now introduce you to Austin, who is now going to share with us on the personality. <laughs> All right, so I wish people here had like a complete douchebag, hothead boss, just someone that you probably hated your whole time working there and they shouldn't have been in that position in the first place. <laughs> So like everyone. So I'm just gonna show y'all like that type of leadership fits in with the big five personality traits and just how it's not an effective leadership approach and why those people should not have those kind of jobs in the first place. So I'm also gonna be connecting in with the big five of just different leaders and leadership effectiveness and how they all correlate with successful leadership and then I'll also be discussing an interview I did with my friend Mike Van Dunn. Um, he works for a company called Limitless Marketing. It's like a third party through AT&T and they kind of, they like outsource for them, like fiber off the cable or something like that. But um, 
So yeah, this is just a more detailed list of the big five. Um, there's extroversion, agreeableness, conscientiousness, emotional stability, and neuroticism or emotional support. Oh wait, open this to the screen. Okay. So psychologists use the big five personality traits to describe five factors that together describe a personality. So if you just take the majority of all these personality types that everyone has and kind of synthesize them down, you get this little list right here. They correlate to the type of leader you ultimately are or will become. So with extroversion, I mean, we all kind of know what that is. You know, you're outgoing, talkative, social, assertive. Uh, you're not afraid of being crowds and you enjoy being the center of attention. So pretty much the opposite of me. Um, with agreeableness, cooperative, friendly, courteous, flexible, trusting, good natured. Um, you seem to be easier to get along with. Um, on the like the darker side of that spectrum, there's like a partially competitive nature that the person might have or a manipulative nature. And then with conscientiousness, self-disciplined, organized, thorough, hardworking, <laughs> persevering, um, high levels of thoughtfulness, good impulse control, uh, really strong goal-directed behaviors, and then just in general, you just tend to be really organized if you have a bunch of traits in conscientiousness. And then with openness to experience, these are in a different order, but yeah. Um, with openness to experience, you have traits like imaginative, curious, broad-minded, intelligent, original, artistically sensitive. Um, again, with a lot of these openness to experience traits, you're gonna just have a broad range of interests and open to trying new things. And then lastly is emotional stability or neuroticism. So with emotional stability, if like, if you have the good side of emotional stability, you're gonna be a calm, poised, secure, like chill, you're, you're just chilling. You're not gonna be freaking out on people. And then with neuroticism, that's like the crazy guy, you know, gonna have a little temper tantrum every once in a while. So this is just a exaggerated video of that. There's no sound. I'll just do like voiceovers or something. Fox is on. Kyle? What? Kyle? Kyle? Yeah. All right. Good job. Wait. Wait. What? Oh, yeah? Yeah. I don't like that spec. Yeah? Huh? Yeah? Yeah, I'm the boss. I'm the boss. You want to get fired? You want to get fired? No? Okay. Clean this up. Oh. <laughs> I think that video is fake. I think it's real. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, uh, researchers, researchers who study the big five personality traits conclude that high levels of agreeableness and emotional stability, stability in groups are associated with group cohesiveness, while conscientiousness is associated with task performance. Um, just goes to show at the end of the day, because no one wants to work with a group member who's unkind, neurotic, and careless, and that's especially the case when it comes to the person that's leading you or managing you. So to connect the big five personality traits in, um, I interviewed my friend Mike Van Dunn. He just manages a, like 20 or 30 salesmen that he sends out every day. Um, it's a really high energy environment. It's really group oriented. And it gets pretty rowdy in there. It's kind of like the Wolf of Wall Street when I walk in there. It's just like, ah. But, yeah, so I just asked him like a few basic, simple questions, just like leadership. How do you motivate? How do you like manage your people? And so the first one I just asked him is like, what is a leader to you like? what should a leader be doing? And he said a leader should be the sharpest image, the sharpest mindset, someone who sets their goals and meets them, um, just being the example who can follow the structure that you set out and do what you need to do and do what needs to be done. Um, just that person that's gonna make those extra sacrifices. And then, so when I asked them like, how do you motivate all these people to wanna go out and do eight hours of 
because he sends them out to do like door-to-door -door stuff like that's straight you know one out of every 20 persons gonna buy your thing so these people are constantly just getting door slammed in their faces and getting yelled at I mean I've probably done that to some people at my door but <laughs> And he said he uh, puts the mindset in them that have, they have to set goals and hit them and you show them that you're setting goals and you're hitting them. And he basically just said lead by example. He said they will follow if you show you're a good leader. That's just how it is, especially if it shows by the fruits of your labor. And basically what makes Mike a good and effective leader is how his personality functions. Like he has those high traits and conscientiousness and extrovert. And so, you know, he's got self-disciplined, organized, thorough, responsible, hardworking, persevering, and that strong goal-directed behavior. And just, yeah, making those extra sacrifices. Yeah, um, so now that you got the little basic breakdown of the big five, uh, here's Vanessa with the five M's with leadership effectiveness. That's awesome. All right. So, does this look like leadership to you guys? Or <laughs> not really, right? Just probably a couple guys goofing off, drinking beer, hanging out. But if there is a leader here, are they getting any work done? And is this leader effective? Well, today I'm gonna to tell you guys about the 5M model of leadership effectiveness and how it's discussed in chapter five. And then I'll introduce the interviewee. He's the leader and CEO of a business called Review Buzz. Um, and he goes further into detail how he models that 5M model leadership effectiveness um, at his company. So what is the 5M model leadership effectiveness? It's how you model, motivate, manage, make decisions, and mentor your members. Um, so it's pretty much everything that Austin and Mac just talked about, and it's like put into one. It's really how you are an effective leader, and using these five things, you can learn how to become that effective leader. So how you model leadership is how you create an example for your team how you show that confidence and get them to want to be better, um, as well as how you motivate your members, um, how to provide inspiration for your team. And then managing group, managing your members is managing group processes, how you go about uh, preparing for meetings and setting goals and getting everyone on the same page, um, and how you make decisions, how you make timely, ethical, and responsible decisions. And then mentoring members is just how you inspire optimism and inspire your team members to also want to be leaders and put them in a position where they're able to make decisions as well. So Mike Montano, also my father, some people call him my twin, or me his twin, um, goes into further detail of how he models leadership and how it's put into effect. So as a leader, he wants to fully engage his team. He wants to um, get them to mobilize, to create better products, he wants his team to, com to commit to why they exist as a business, and that in itself will motivate them to, you know, all have that same common goal and create a better product overall. So he models leadership by setting core values. Um, core values within this organization helps keep everyone on track in the company. Um, not only the members follow these core values, but as well as the leaders and anyone who is really higher up, the managers as well. Um, his personal value is to live what you preach and set by example. So Austin and Mac, they both talked about that and how setting by example is super important and I'm not sure all of you guys know that as well. And then how you motivate your members. using trans He uses transparency, visibility, and feedback. So he um, they use this concept called courageous truth where everyone has the ability to give feedback. So even people that are you know just starting like they give him feedback on what you know is working well for them and what's not working well for them. And then giving his employees recognition and physical rewards. So they have a wheel. Someone's doing really, really well and they completed something really great. They have this wheel where they spin the wheel and that wheel has like gift cards, movie tickets, like just a lot of fun things. And that kind of gets them excited, you know, to want to do better and create that goal or make that goal happen. So it's also called like reward power, which again, Mac discussed that earlier. Um, and then managing group processes for this team is really easy because they have this concept called level 10 meetings. So the objective is to literally always have that level 10 meeting, right? So um, they have the organization down, they start with the good news, to company headlines, to issues, to prioritizing issues. 
and at the end of each meeting they score how they did if they get anything lower than an eight then um, then they want to discuss what went wrong in the meeting so an eight is you would think is pretty good but if they get anything lower than that like that's not good enough for their team so I thought that was pretty cool keeps them on track in their meetings because I know it's really easy to get off track in a meeting um, and then making decisions in a timely, ethical, and responsible manner. That in itself just sounds overwhelming for anyone. So he says that you have to be committed to your decisions even if they aren't perfect. He said that sometimes good is good enough. Um, and then he used a really cool concept. He said that it, as a leader, it's really easy to get, put, like, get caught up in putting out all the fires. He described it as like a bunch of monkeys. So monkeys would be the employees coming to you with their issues and um, he wants to make sure that anyone that is bringing you an issue also leaves with that issue and he can he will guide them on how to fix it but he said if you don't do that then you're going to get caught up with all these monkeys like you'll be covered in monkeys and then you won't be able to get anything done for yourself and then setting priorities for yourself is also super important because if you don't set priorities for yourself others will um, and then finally mentoring your members so uh, he ma makes sure that he cares for them professionally and personally. So uh, you can see here that they definitely create culture at their company. I don't know really what they're doing, but <laughs> like, I guess the guy's cheerleading. I don't know. They're just like super supportive. They're all friends. Creating culture is like a really big thing right now in companies. I think a lot of companies are picking this up and trying to be better. And you want to make sure your employees are motivated to go to work. And like if they're doing this, like drinking a beer every once in a while, like I would want to go to work. So. I thought that was really cool. They have a book or um, like a presentation called like it's like a culture book and it literally is just like their company's culture and it's like a 43 like slide presentation on their culture at their um, work. So I thought that was really interesting and um, that's where I pulled this picture from. And then another one of the company's core values is endless improvement. So. They're always trying to improve, and that's how he wants to make sure that he's not only focusing on his um, employees' uh, strengths, but also their weaknesses, so that he can have, help them improve their weaknesses. So, And then, as you can see, all of those five and model leadership effectiveness, it's a lot of work. They're a lot of work in themselves, so I kind of wondered, like, how do you motivate yourself? Like, that's a lot of work. Do you ever just feel like giving up? And he said that you need, to, as a leader, or when you're becoming a leader, you need to first focus on yourself. Figure out your why. Your why is super important, because if it's, power, if it's powerful, you'll always find that leverage and that force to keep you going and push you through. So like, for him, he said it's like his family and his kids, and like that power is full enough for him to like keep wanting to do better as a leader. Um, so today, uh, and we discussed the group leadership and how it's discussed in chapter five, the ethics and type of power, the personality traits, and the five M model leadership effectiveness. And from what I've shared with you about my father, he has been the leader in our household. He has modeled power, integrity, core value, and personality traits um, that you wanna look for in a leader. So we hope that this presentation has helped you to become future leaders, like good, future leaders or just you know what you want to look for in a leader eventually so yeah i hope today that we have inspired you and thank you guys for taking time